Hi guys and welcome to Dance Talk. Uh, today we're talking about social media, which is uh, a really important topic um, and becoming a huge part of our dance world. And I'm really excited to welcome three amazing guests. We've got Dayton Tavares, Sally Dashwood, and Josh Hoyer. And I'm your host, BJ Raw. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, I'm really excited to chat to you guys. It's definitely an area that I'm not super experienced in, but I'm really excited to hear kind of your perspective on the role social media plays in our industry um, and how we can kind of best utilize it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dayton, you're the youngest one of us, yep. and I guess the person that's probably <laughs> grown up with social media being part of your life for the longest time. Yep. Um, I guess, like, how important do you see social media for you in your career growing up? Like, how, how, how big a role does it play? Um, I mean, personally, for me, I know that uh, utilising social media can be a great tool in helping um, someone's career, uh, especially coming out of, say, full-time when you haven't had as much experience in the industry, mm. um, like, prior to... Um, finishing your training but for me personally uh, I made a decision to not live off my social media mm -hmm. um, and I know it's important as a marketing tool and I do utilize it every now and then but I also really wanted to set the foundation of my career being built by myself rather than yeah. how people see me just online because yes. I know that our online persona can be different to who we actually are Yes, and I always found it more important to um, achieve success organically Yeah. Um, and so although I do think social media can be important I've, I also understand that there's a lot more to it than yeah. just social media getting you jobs because it, totally. it's not the only thing that's going to get you jobs. Well, this is the this is the I guess debate that you've got often from different generations. I guess in our world is um, is it do you need a big social media following to have a career in this industry? And mm. you've got people that have lived without it that have a great career, and then you've got you've got so many different sides of the of the story, and it's just like it's so hard for parents and children to know how important it is for their kids to actually have it at a certain age and then utilize it to actually help them get a head start in the industry. Um, where, do, where do you guys stand on that? It's hard for this generation because they have it. Yeah. They weren't around when it wasn't around. Mm. Back in my day, <laughs> um, <laughs> where you had to kick a high leg for a nice job. Yeah. Um, I think it's there's a combination too because the stage parents are very heavy mm. for the younger generation on you know the, that dance mumsy types of world Ma managing their children managing the kids yeah, accounts yeah. until the they get old enough and then one, gets yeah. onto it. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I found it very interesting um, watching them grow up over social media. Yeah, mm. um, I've only been able to identify some of like your generations of kids that I've seen online through Dance Upon a Dream when I had the online thing. Yes. Mm. Um, watching it, like one girl that I thought was a beautiful ballet dancer and I thought, oh, she's going to be so into ballet, ballet, ballet and then next minute these come out and body changes and girls get a little bit model-like and then all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I wasn't really expecting you to go down that path. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a... I find a great tool, social media. Like, I coach, when I coach kids, I would be saying, get yourself out there. It's a way of directing. It's kind of like dance on film. You know how when you go to a performance, you can watch the lights, or I've had people say, I just love to watch their hands. But with social media, you can direct your audience to go, look at me, and this is what I want you to look at. Yeah. And some people overuse head rolls. Because that's all they do. <laughs> they think putting on some makeup and a tarty costume and they do a head roll and they think that's, you know, 
That's a video. No, it's not. It's boring. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing. Like, I think social media, one of the challenges is um, it's based a lot on what's popular now. It's based on what's mm. current, what's happening. Um, and I think the fact that you see so many people doing the same things, it's kind of defeating the purpose because I guess for me, I assume that one of the biggest points of it is to stand out, is to get noticed, is to... Um, you know, have content there that people can go, oh, have you seen um, that new dancer? They're amazing. What? Go look at their account. Mm. And I guess if it is that, like, current thing that everyone's doing, what's the point if everyone else is doing it? Yeah, I think people break through yeah. that. You know, I... Um, yeah, you've made a good point. I think, but ironically, I find what um, what I see other people liking and following on social media and what the information that people are putting out there... Um, certain things do get likes and follows really easily. Yeah. So then I find that we're all falling into these same categories yeah. of kind of online personas or things that we put out there, parts of our personality or... And it might only be one facet, like you said. It might mm. not be the whole kind of truth and what who I am in reality. And that's what gets easy likes and follows. Yeah. And so, therefore... I find myself scrolling thinking like everyone's looking, everyone's becoming the same, the same as everyone else yeah. because we know that's what gets alike. Mm. It's kind of back like the tilts and stuff like that or the flexibility things. Yeah. They've got feral technique and then everyone's just got feral technique and then everyone's like, that's amazing. No, it's not. Yeah, it's and you almost thing. become conditioned to seeing it. So then That's you true. Condition to liking it, and it's like TikTok now. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe the generation of dancers where what I've noticed, like with TikTok, is that people do like really <laughs> subtle choreography, and I'm like, oh, I had to do a fan kick really high back in the day, and you guys can go like that, and that's like, oh, I'll book well, a commercial the, yeah. out of that. Yeah. 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 yeah, TikTok's one of those things too that's like you probably see this too. It's crept into the dance studio. Oh yeah, it's crept into every facet oh of gosh. life. I think for it's it's such kids a conflict. And parents. I guess I guess all of social media is a, is a conflict for me because I see the benefit <laughs> and then I see the the problems with it. And TikTok's definitely one of those things where you go, okay, it's cool that people are dancing more than they ever did. People that never danced before are just dancing all the time to post these videos. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you see, you see them putting so much more effort practicing and videoing these TikTok dances than they're doing the actual yeah. troop routines or their class stuff. Totally. And then for me, it's like it's the same thing. I'll be in class, and you know, I'll go, okay, let's do a. We'll be doing our fan kicks from the corner. Thank you. Good little dances. Please. And then I'll go, okay, freestyle. And they'll free, they'll walk down from the corner, doing, doing the <laughs> doing yeah, the TikTok. Yes. And I'm saying, guys, doing you're trained dancers. You're actually better than what you're yeah. seeing on. Yeah. Like that mm. has its place, and that is valid and it's mm. fun. And like yeah, you said, it's so great that people are enjoying dance. Yeah, that's a, and not expressing a bad, themselves. Not mm -hmm. a bad thing, but you guys have the goods already. You should be the ones creating the content totally. for TikTok. They should be copying you. So yes. I don't want to see it in my dance class. Because yes. <laughs> a lot of the time, I mean, as far as I have very, very limited understanding of TikTok, <laughs> but a lot of the time from what I'm seeing, the people that are making the routines up, they're not like trained choreographers yeah, or dancers. No. So like all these amazing dancers are doing Getting dances. Getting on board with this. Yeah, thing. learning yeah, from crazy. people that really probably don't know much about the dance world at all. So it's just mm. ironic. I know it's not the purpose of it. And I guess... The benefit over that that I see for young kids is they're actually expressing themselves. They're, they're using their personalities more than just trying to look pretty and do a photo, you know, which I think is more totally, the completely. Instagram more and stuff like yeah. that. What I don't understand is if everyone is doing similar TikToks, why is one person more popular, popular. than another? Because you'll see some yeah. of those people that are like the top people on TikTok yeah. and I'm like, what's so good about her? Well, that's Why aren't I the top? And then, if there is that difference, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Do you it think must play with their heads? Yeah. Do you think you want to mention like the the benefit of the dance career? Meaning, instead of just TikTokers and kids in classes and stuff. Mm. For me, I've hired people from an Instagram yeah. video. Yeah. So yes. Well, this and, is the other debate want, that we yes. want to talk about. Yeah. So, I find it really useful and I think during this pandemic season that 
I keep saying to full-time students, mm. this is the perfect time to just get your library of mm. online yeah. material mm-hmm. ready. So when someone calls and goes, can you, you know, you give me it? your acro version singing a princess song in a rock yeah. type tone. <laughs> You're like, I've got it. And yes. you've got three videos. Because yeah. I, I got a young kid, his name's Jack, and I got him a... 17 month contract on a Disney cruise ship just because he sent me an acro 30 second acro Amazing. video. Wow. And he just, you know, I think it's important to talk on the social media videos too. Like yep. you might do tumble, 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 and then you'd be like, Hi, I'm Josh Horner and I'm 20,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I find that as a, as a choreographer and when I was casting and doing things at Disney, you, you want to hear people, yeah. you want to hear them talk. Mm. I'm like, are you actually a nice person to yeah. hang out with mm. in the studio for mm. eight weeks while we rehearse this show? And do you have or, confidence to actually stand oh, and talk in, some, in front of someone? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah Don't just so do true. a head roll. Right. Yeah, because right. I don't know about you guys, but I find um, you know, there's people in my life that I love and I adore and they're fun and bubbly and all the great things and they're my friends and... I find that the information that they even put out onto social media is completely conflicting with who I think yeah. they are as a person. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's really detrimental totally. when someone says, hey, do you know this person? I'm thinking of using them. I've got to cast this mm. last well, dancer the first thing in a they group do, of 20. Yep, they'll go to their Facebook. They'll go to their and I'm like, Insta. I'm like, yeah, but that's, that's actually not who not that them. person mm. is. They're going to turn up. They're going to work hard for you. They're going to be a lot of fun. They're going yes. to be professional. Yeah. But they're this, seeing this like conflicting information online. This is a really important part of, of today's discussion. It's We can always say there's good sides to social media, there's bad sides, but... Ultimately, it exists. It's not going mm-hmm. away, and it's about putting the right content up, right? So, yeah. if you're conflicting um, people's opinion about yourself based on what you're putting up there, or if the people that are recommending you for something are going to your page and seeing something that they might change their mind, or, or they're going, "Oh, they're an amazing contemporary dancer. You should check them out," and they've got no content of them doing a contemporary dance. Mm. Yeah, it's actually hurting you. I know, as a studio owner. Um, Someone said, oh, you should get this teacher out. Um, and then if I go on, I have to decide, is this... like? Because ultimately, we have to accept that all the students are going to go on and go, we love that class, and they're going to follow that teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, as a studio a owner, am I comfortable with the fact that now my students are going to yeah. be looking up to this person as an idol, right? So people need to think about what is the image they're putting out there on them for themselves and is that actually going to help me get work or is it going to stop me from getting work yeah well that's just going to separate the people that are serious and hungry to get it Mm. as opposed to the buffheads that just (laughs) the buffheads although for the buffheads it might work in their favour if they look like a lovely person on their Instagram yeah true might work the other way do, well. do you go on to people's pages like when you're hiring someone or when someone says oh get this person they're great yeah i don't think i would have ever hired someone just based just on, on social media yes. definitely there's also like value in having a video online somewhere mm. of what you do like mm. what you, you would have say to yeah, have, yeah, you i don't know to. why in this day and age kids don't have a reel and i mm. i just a reel or a separation of all the different dance styles yeah. all the different singing styles all the different monologues you can so have all the do. different tricks mm. you can do yeah. I'm like you should have a separate video that you just send it it's so easy to so get a easy. job mm. so easy to get a job because also too when I first went to America I couldn't go into MSA the agency and go okay move back please everyone I'm about to do a pirouette and a fan kick like, I had to present a showreel to either just yeah. get their attention. Mm, mm. We are in the art of show business, so you need to get people's attention. Yeah. Um, I think everyone that is an, a trained and educated dance teacher, uh, casting director or whatnot, they're going to see the talent. Mm. But I'm going to be honest, there has been... I remember when I was in LA, they said, um, back in the day, um, <laughs> I remember a Target commercial, they said, please don't come to the commercial unless you have 10,000 or more followers. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's like a whole other topic, isn't it? Yes. Like yeah. that We're whole thing. But so yeah, definitely things. as a second point of call, like in the casting process, yeah. if you just need that little bit more information, yes, it's such a good tool totally. for mm. a caster casting director or for the talent. So your cover picture shouldn't be you out drinking or being naughty. Totally. Yes. 
Yeah, depending on who's casting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. And that's, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if you ask a student or a young dancer, what's, what are your goals? What are your dreams in this industry? And they rattle off a whole bunch of things. If you go to their page, are those, is their wall or whatever they've got, is that backing up what they want to do? You know, that's, I think, the question I'd like to ask a lot of young dancers. If I, if you say I want to be in a, get into a contemporary company or I want to be uh, get into musical theatre, if I go to your page, you should yeah, have represent. that yeah. content there so that when someone recommends you, because that's how a lot of people get work in this industry, right? People recommend someone. I, I need to see it there. And reverse that. If I, I when I, I taught a, a, a workshop of auditions and I'd say the exact that question, like mm. what, where do you want to be? What type of dancer do you want to be? And a lot of them go, I want to work for Disney. And I'm like, great, how do you know about the auditions? And they're like... And I'm like, there's a website, DisneyAuditions.com. Mm. Or if I would say I want to be a contemporary dancer, I'm like, amazing. Name five contemporary yeah. dance companies in Australia. <laughs> and they, could, uh, they couldn't even get five out. I think now we're talking about social media, we also should also talk about the internet and the education yes. of learning and Definitely. YouTube. Like this Using it in the right way. Absolutely, yeah. as an educational tool to like totally mm. be all over it so you know I, how to get yeah, a job. Yeah, I think you've struck a really a point that I feel really strongly about. I'm a wizard, about. of course I strike <laughs> points. <yes. laughs> um, and that is that... And I think Dayton's actually a really great example of a dancer that like exists in the real world mm. and has the goods yeah. and works a lot cons and consistently, but then also has, I don't know, you, I'm guessing you have a big social media following because you should. Um, <laughs> and also does exist on that platform as well. Yes, yes. Um, but what was my point? <laughs> you're that Dayton is amazing. Yeah, and you're and a wizard. I agree. And you're, a wizard. Um, and you're amazing. Oh, Dayton. yeah, that's so. Yeah, so should I just start that point again? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so thank you. That's a really good point because you're a wizard. Oh, yeah. I think Dayton is a really good um, example of someone that kind of exists in the real world, works consistently, has that versatility in his career, but also has like a good presence on social media. Yeah. Probably a big following as well. No, I don't know. I didn't check. <laughs> I haven't checked how many followers you're at lately. Um, but I think we're at the risk of because I I'll teach classes or you know just talk to dancers and say like who inspires you. Yeah. And we are so Josh at Horner. the risk. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> who else? <laughs> Guys, I don't want to hear more about Josh Horner. <laughs> Tell me who else, if anyone, <laughs> inspires you. But we're at the risk of only mm. going as far as our fingertips yes. to find inspiration. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I know we're talking about, like, you, you should have this information yes. on, on your Instagram or your social media. But I actually, the people, I think, especially, like, in Sydney, in my circles, the people that I think work at the level that I admire... Mm. Um, that are my pe mostly my peers, I think, because we do come from that transitional, like we grew Era. up to a certain point with yes. no, without social media and then it happened. It existed. They don't have a big following. No. They don't put dance videos out mm. there, but no. they are consistently working. It's probably more so the people that are directing, choreographing, resident directors, yeah. assistant, you know, in that sort of land. But they don't spend a lot of time on they don't no. have, um, you know, a fully curated feed. Yeah, yeah. But they have a cons like a great career. Yeah. Um, so I think there is also, a <laughs> like yeah. as you said, a conflicting side of that. Exactly, because then how are the kids growing in the right areas? But I think that comes down to the teachers a little bit, kind yeah. of going, mentioning yeah. all the names all the time. Yeah. We, we brought this up in the teachers episode. Um, if they're saying the names enough, they they're out there. They're yeah, all, if, even definitely. if they're not on social media, they're well, on they're YouTube. They're teaching too. Yeah, yeah a and, lot and of those people. Yeah, so yeah. like it's getting the right name so that they can find the research. That they're, they're on the pages where the auditions are. And I think I mean Josh, you, you've been a perfect example of someone that's thought about um, the internet and social media uh, as a tool to progress as a business, whether it be as yourself individually as a business or a business that you run separately. Um, You've been really good at that. Um, how do you kind of approach your um, your presence online when it comes to actually pushing 
yourself forward or your career for I think forward. working for Disney for eight years, I was under that thing of I can't post me being a buffhead <laughs> or being <laughs> naughty or yeah. being obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was in that zone. And then with a television career, it's quite funny. When I got Dancing with the Stars, they told me to turn off Facebook and YouTube mm-hmm. and everything. And I wasn't allowed to take pictures backstage and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Like, that's what the network told me to do. Or next minute, everyone's like, oh, look at me backstage. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had that chance over to really boost it. it. Um, But I feel like I think I strived a lot in my career just to be known. I come from a small country town. Which is getting bigger, but um, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted wanted people to know what I could do. So it's also about that networking and putting yourself out there because you can't mm. sell a secret, right? So <laughs> you can't. How you you've got to sell yourself in this business. Yeah. That if you want to survive and be noticed, you've got to either have excruciatingly amazing, mind blowing talent, or you've got notoriety. And you were just saying something that kind of struck a chord with me about. Back in the day when there was no social media, like the reason I was the lead in a chorus line was because I was on Dancing with the Stars, which was in effect trying to create bums on seats to go to the show, Mm. right? So when there was no social media, the TV stars Mm. were the ones that... So social media is actually a a self-controlled way of gaining notoriety Mm. to then add value for either companies to hire you in a commercial or you to be someone to be the lead in a musical yeah uh, it's it's a double edged yeah. sword yeah. Yeah. but it's actually what I find is just trying to find the balance that's yeah. so I, true I don't have yeah. all the followers in the world but all my followers just love the entertainment that you make me smile I always think does this video make someone smile mm. and it's kind of like uh, Super Mario currency that if you get <laughs> instead of a like I would rather someone go oh my goodness that's hilarious oh my goodness you made my day yes. then you're like oh my goodness I'm putting a positive effect yeah, onto the planet great. that's um, such a good way to think of it yeah, yeah I know I like that yeah but I don't think a lot of people are thinking about it like that that's the problem well, there's a monetary type of thing as well. Like I remember um, uh, Ma- uh, Mackenzie Ziegler. So my f- we're, we quite we know them because my friend BP is very close with them. So I hear a lot of the stories. Yeah. And I remember we went out for coffee, and he's like, "Can you believe it? Like him and I are taking a selfie, going like mm, Sunday." <laughs> Sunday coffee, <laughs> right? <laughs> Trying to look all like fabulous in LA. And um, Mackenzie was, her mum just goes, Mackenzie, can you like hold this can of beans? And she got $45,000 just to hold a can of beans, oh to take a selfie and take a picture. So Love then in my head, if I had children, <laughs> I would be like, oh, that's your college degree, honey, or that's, yeah. you know, you're a Stedford entry fees. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's the balance. Like, yeah. You should. You got one chance at life at the end of the day. Like, yeah. if you want to have a dance career, wake up and smell the flowers. It's happening right now. Yeah. So push it out as much as you can because once you get older, those filters don't work. <laughs> so I think what's cool is that because I until recently, because we've all had to go online mm. with everything that we do for a period of time, I always love what we do because ultimately, despite what's happening on the internet, we, what we do is a physical thing that requires us to be in a space and mm. doing it. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of loved that about what we do. But then, yeah, I guess, I don't know. The conflict yeah, thing is really interesting. the danger of, um, say, open classes and having that physical yeah. presence. But I, like 70% of the class doesn't give their all to being in that class mm. for the purpose of educating themselves and becoming yeah. a better dancer it's to get that last 10 minutes of class where they get the film just posted on social yes. media and yeah, right. i this think topic, also yeah. social media creates this <laughs> yes <Yeah>. creates this <laughs> um it, it can create superpowers for some people um so like there's people who have a massive following and like you were saying before people only go as far as their fingertips and so who's popular now saying our generation and people are looking up to them but we should be going further in going, okay, if that person inspires me, who, inspired who educated them? them? Who taught them? Totally. Who taught them? Yeah. And um, like people just don't because yeah. the people before them, despite being absolutely incredible mentors to those people, mm-hmm. don't have the same following yeah. that those people do. 
So they become and, less relevant, right? And yeah, Sometimes. and a lot of those people who have a following sometimes the importance of what they're doing taking in an open room. class yeah. to them is to get their own choreography out and that's yeah. the difference between being a teacher if you if you want to put on an open class as a teacher um, and that's your purpose then you have to teach Friendship. it's not just to yeah. relay choreography yes for the video at the end and I think I think that's the key I think the the issue can um, become much worse when people are changing the things they do in their day mm. based on what's going to end up on their social media page. Yeah. If you're doing class how you normally do class and um, living your day how you normally live your day and then you've got extra time where you choose to post something of, of value, great. But it's when it's affecting our industry, yeah, when it's affecting do. the yeah. work that you do, when it's affecting everything, the relationships that you have, that's when it can become detrimental. Yeah. Think, and not worth it, really, in the long run. Yeah. It sounds like dancers are confused at what you're actually meant to do. Like, yeah. what I'm listening to, like, you guys are talking a lot about the, the teachers on social media and getting the following to be able to go and teach and stuff. Yeah. But I'm so confused because all I remembered was... I was learning dance to become a performer on stage. Yeah. Yes. And there's mm. different types of dancers. There's the dancer like me who was a leading man, right? I was mm. front and centre or I was, you know, the principal in the Australian ballet. Yep. Like, I was a leading man dancer. Then you've got another slash dancer, which is a backup commercial dancer that is, like, singer, hot dancer. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then they've got a whole get up of what they've got to do on social media. Mm. Then you've got the Gumby cool circus trick person yeah. who's in Cirque du Soleil and shows mm. like that that does death defying amazing stuff or stunt performing. Then you've got the I just doing step touch, step touch Disney performer that either looks like a princess or can hold a tune mm. and sing as a character from Disney. Yeah. So then you've got those types of dancers. And then you've got these other characters that are like, I don't want to be a performer. This is the one that I'm like, oh, where'd you come from? Yep. The ones that don't mm. want to be performers but want to build up social media yep. to be a superstar teacher, which sometimes is very conflicting because I believe I was a good teacher because, because I had experience that. on stage and mm -hmm. I have a wealth of knowledge to go like that to young performers mm. and go, this is how I did it, on the kids. this is what you do. Yeah. But this is where if we're inspired by what's accessible right here. I think this is why you're confused. I think... Mm. Why I think no one wants to take know. Josh Horner's class anymore <laughs> because I'm not on the socials. Because I don't think that they know. I think they go, oh, I want to be like that person who is sick. Mm. But they don't know the final teaching. outcome. Like it's just it, a lot of recently I, yeah. you know, I always Not a job where you get money to pay your bills That's right. or pay for an experience. Yeah, and it's sad because they, they're not aspiring to have that feeling that we all know of being on stage. And applause. Mm. Well, that. Yes. <laughs> yes. The roar. Just and, and just that, I can't even explain it, the joy yeah. and that that. Like, we know what it is. When you don't fall out don't. of a double pirouette. And you nail it. <laughs> yeah. That um, feeling. Just no, that, that rewarding, intrinsic in. yeah. feeling that we mm. have from being yeah. a performer and being on stage and touching and reaching out to mm. an audience and making yeah. them feel something. Mm. They're like. not inspired. They're not aspiring to, to do, do that. So the question is, how do we inspire them? Because now in a pandemic, there is no audience. I know. Right? And we are well, it's online. Just confused yeah. the situation. No, we could be yeah, yeah, trailblazers. Yeah, yeah. We're going to tell the kids <laughs> what they should be questions. feeling. Yeah. It, it, That's it's, what a podcast is. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's good. <laughs> Thought provoking. Exactly. Um, it is hard. It is really hard. <laughs> and now I've got so many so questions hard. in my head. But yeah. I think it, I think it, it always, maybe I, I'm doing a lot of teaching and maybe I'll, that's why I keep going back to that every episode. Yeah, it comes but down to the I teacher. think it is a lot to do with the teacher. Yeah. Getting in and going, what is it that each of these students want to do? Or giving them the knowledge, the people to look up to, the, the career paths, like you said, where are you trying to get into? Then if you are trying to get to those areas, these are the things you should be researching. These mm -hmm. are the people you should be researching. Um, and just realizing that it's, it's important you know, social media exists. You have to have a presence. But, I mean, Dayton, you're, you're probably doing a lot of most out of us kind of current auditions. I'm hearing a lot of people 
now are kind of asking. It's it's hard because they're apparently asking, how many followers do you have Told on you, the yeah. on yeah. the actual audition paper? Is that yeah. is that true? Yeah, I've, I've I've had a few even um, TVCs that like weren't part of the dance industry, mm-hmm. um, and part of like next to name, age, height, <laughs> waist, Insta followers, Insta followers, yeah, <laughs> because wow. it's a business, it's an economy, yeah. like yeah, it's like. I watched Celeste Barber. I remember her when she had zero followers. Yeah. And down at, uh, I remember she was the drum. She was being a drama teacher at Lee Academy. Yeah. And down in Wild, she was there, and she was fully just got the girls behind her and did the Justin Bieber like sorry, <laughs> and she was like copying it, and she had like about you know six hundred followers. Mm. Neck minute, she's like got <laughs> millions. Really? So oh. I've watched that trajectory. Yeah. And it's a business. Mm. She is booked yeah. to do stuff. So we are in, you know, the thing is if you get into a musical, you want to be you're you're gonna get a wage, but you negotiate the wage, and that's why you have a thing called an agent. Mm. Right? So the agent is to be there to negotiate your wage based on your value yeah. and your followers probably. So mm. if you've These got days, two yeah. people that are just perfect same dancers yeah. one's got more followers you're going to look at the big wigs and the producers and they're going to go who's going to be the more exciting person who's going to get us more views mm. maybe in the contract it says you know you have to post the commercial on your mm. social pages which is then it's an economy so i guess the i guess the it's question not going is, away bj it's <laughs> not it's not but i guess like Dason said at the very start you want to be known for the talent that you have and mm. and i think that that creates longevity in this industry. You might have that, and I think there's other things that you can go into. I, I've heard about classes now where teachers are paying people to do the class. This is in America, apparently, yeah. because they've got so much of a following. Like, it exists, and there's terrible, I think these terrible things. Paying, like, double the price for someone with the same amount of talent on a musical because they're going to get more bums on the seat. All these things exist, but I think the difference is the longevity. The difference is, do you want to be that person that gets that feeling from being on stage and performing and having people respond because of your talent, having people talk about you because of your ability, or do you want to be that person that goes, oh, we have to get them on because they're going to get bums on seats? But how are you going to know if they're talking about you? Because usually online, the comments, that's how you know that they're talking about you. You know, that, that, that What you describe is the most beautiful, organic, soulful dancer that does it no one like dance like and no I one's watching. And I loved it and then you ruined it, Josh. <laughs> Why did I ruin it? <laughs> now I'm you're being honest. Talking that about the good. reality of this yeah. situation. Well, yeah. what are we supposed I to do? Nice. Live in dreamland? Well, it's not Disneyland, <laughs> darling. We're in Pen... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got to be honest. Like, yeah, no. what no, you're I'm, talking I'm, about I'm, is I'm gold. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. what every dancer should have. Yeah. That beautiful dance like no one's watching. It doesn't matter what people think. Yeah. But... Your Ultimately next question is does. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. your mother will then say, why is he in the front row and you're not? Why did they get the job? And you're like, because I'm doing it for me, <laughs> mum, and I'm just <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to be real, but it's it's a business. It's showbiz. It is, yeah. It is a business. It is. Yeah. But that's where I think, <laughs> and then going back to that other side of it, the detrimental side is people are thinking about followers, which which is, it comes up on a, on an audition paper and it might get some people a job but it also like I said before can cost you a job as well yeah. if you don't have content that's mm. so I guess I guess people have to ask themselves what part of this industry do I want to focus on what part do I want to be a part of and then where do I how much focus and what type of content do I need based on that which then becomes even more challenging mm. for, for, it's for young dancers it's not a challenge no I. it's so easy I don't understand. I get so frustrated with like young dancers or full time dancers. It is so easy to grab your phone and record yourself doing what you do best. Well, I guess right? it is simple in that way. I yeah. maybe I find it simple because I have no fear. I just grab the yeah. camera mm. and I do it. Yeah. And I think that's maybe a golden tool that we should teach our younger ones. Yeah. And also filming themselves in class. Don't film yourself with like what you say the mm. last ten minutes. Film yourself and go. Did you see when we said you sickled your foot? Let's just slow that down. <laughs> and there yeah. it is. Yeah, you know we've I mean? lost sight of that. Yeah. Like, 
techniques well, out the window. Like that's videoing I, yourself as a tool mm, would to better your class would be so yeah. it's such a great way to use your phone. Yes, that's <laughs> but, so um, true. They yeah, don't do that. That's no. That doesn't happen. It's no, so it's focused always on that last finished post. product. Yeah, it's to always get the that end, and that's what the post, that's what yeah. I think. Can we just make a note here that I've been out of the dance industry for a couple of years. We <laughs> <laughs> just need to for the viewers at home going. That guy that's yelling, he he just has a strong opinion, <laughs> and he that doesn't guy. know what's going on. I think they know so who you are. Know. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I think it's a it's a good point. You do need to film yourself, and you do need to put yourself out there. I think the issue that dancers have is the importance they have on the filming and not actually yeah. getting a good end Being result. Good, yeah. And so what happens is mm. while they're learning something, they're already thinking, I've got to film this. And so they're like in their brain, instead of being present yeah. and actually taking in what's being taught, they're already like, their mindset is already like, I can't, I've got to go get my phone and like not have it there to film the process. Yeah, and then they can focus on the process. It's just like, they're already at that point where they're oh. like, I'm going to get my phone and they're rushing their training gonna this is and weird. skipping and the, the, good, the, the valid points. Like, like the, yeah. the teacher saying, don't sickle your foot. They're missing that because they're already like, How I, I don't care. Work? I just got to get this on film. When I did a Steadfords back in the 1900s, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, this is what I, we would wait like six or seven weeks for the video, the guy on the video in the centre, <laughs> we would wait like six weeks and in the mail comes the video and you put it in and the first thing I would do is like, oh, no wonder I didn't win. Look at my, and I would literally mm -hmm. be self, self assessing and yeah. self critical mm. to really try and no refine. Filter. I grew up in a studio without mirrors. Mm. I started yeah, dancing same. in a local, you know, yeah. guide hall. Wow. Yeah. So no mirrors. Didn't get to see myself. Or, I had to, I had to feel it, BJ, like the dancer you were in the organic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, there's also something in, like, say you use it as critique, and you're like, I need to fix this. Mm. There are so many dancers who will film something, I don't get why. If you're not happy with what you filmed... Don't post it. Don't post it, because that yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. representing yeah. you. That's your reputation. That's, yeah. And to, you can't justify that with the caption saying, I have so much <laughs> to fix. This this <laughs> was a really favorite. bad take, but <laughs> like, I've got, I'm like, whatever. Oh, well. Oh, well. And then the thing is, they don't put in the effort to fix it because their friends who in real life mm. were there watching them who didn't clap after they did their group, are then online posting love hearts saying, you killed this, you're fire. And, and that for them is all the validity. <laughs> like that provides validity and yeah, validation. It's trophy at the estate. Yeah, it's, and, and it's, that's, yeah. that's what I mean. Like, sure, people like talk about you online, but my, I, for me personally, my success, I choose to, oh, what do you choose, Dave? I'm saying when I po when I post things, I think it all comes down to intention, and like when I post things, it's because I wanted to post it. You're mm. sharing a and part of you. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and when always people like, cool, this is what I was feeling. Yeah. yeah. I to show you. I'm never yep. fishing or like it's not for like give me likes, and if I don't get likes, I'm gonna be like take it down. Or like um thought this was cute, might delete later. Like that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'd like to use that baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been and gone. Oh, yeah. No, Maybe but like, like if it, it, and that's <laughs> like a safety net for yeah. if this doesn't get as many likes as I thought it was, I'm going to delete this yes. and just pretend it didn't exist. Yeah. And yeah, I think, so my, I, think, the, I don't need the validation. If I post something like uh, I wanted to post it. I think these are good ways to, to know if, because I think we should, we talked a lot about kind of using it as a career um, tool, but I think another really important part about this discussion is mm. um, the side of it for, for children because they're using it at a young age um, and their you know mental health is a big part of it and it's come up in every episode and we yeah. are going to do a separate episode with right. mental health experts uh, experts um, and people in that field. But in reality, it is a big issue for young people. Um, mm. You know that that different feeling, you know of of having someone actually give you a real compliment in real life, you go, oh my gosh, you're dancing so well, you're doing really good, you know, that is kind of losing power in the real world because, like you said, they're posting they're it and it's common. It and they're still, they're still gonna, gonna say love. it's great, it's awesome, you're Ooh, doing great. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, that side of it's kind of disappearing and it's, it's kind of, you know, what's the, firstly, 
what's the right age for kids to start being able to use it? And then 25, what, if you're my daughter. Well, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry. And? Yeah, no, 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 no that's, <laughs> that's well, what is the right <laughs> age. Yeah, I mean. It's kind of like floodgate open once one. Once, they, once you let them use one, it. Once mother does it, or father. Yeah. Equal opportunity. Like, they're all just trying to outdo each other. Mm. Yeah, and the mum... Like, so 13, the, should we say 13? Teenager. 13? Well, I think, when, the, I think the legal age think to be on social 13. media is actually 14, isn't it? Oh, 13. Yeah, 13, yeah, 13 yeah, so that's... 13! You're yeah. technically not <laughs> supposed to be on there I mean, until I think, you are 14. Yeah, and then I think it is that question of um, then for how long should parents be able to monitor that and, and check on it and see how they... I think well, it's my mum monitors part. my social media all the Still? time. Great. She's not logged in, but she does it from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout, out, shout yeah. out to Julie Hare. I love you, Mum. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Sally, did you mean to post this because it's not spelt correctly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, my mum does Thanks, that too. <laughs> yeah, looking out for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I taught a class and we had a little bit of, like, a discussion at the end. Like, and one of them said, Sal, it feels like uh, a lot of the teachers will pick out um, the people, you know, like we're all here working hard. Um, it feels like to a lot of us that the teachers are picking out for the group at the end of mm. class the people with a big following. <gasps> Which definitely happens. I can see definitely that. Definitely happens. Mm. And I'm listening because they're trying they're to advertise talking. their dance studio. Aren't yeah. They? So and I said, and I, I I went right. So I in this particular class had never posted a video of them doing any of my Cory and I was like, guys, when I'm here, I can honestly, 100% honestly say, I'm here for you mm. to be your teacher. Yes. I've never posted a video of you because mm. you're not ready. Mm. Uh, okay. And I said, you might want to think about, and I, I'm not making a judgment about any of your teachers, but maybe they're picking people out that have a following because yeah. they know that therefore more people are going to like your videos. That makes total sense to me. But I grew up in a time, I think I got Facebook when I was like 24. Yeah. So I have a comparison. These guys were like, oh, I never thought of that. Mm. They don't know the difference. Mm. They didn't, hadn't even considered that that might be the case because they're completely, there's no detachment mm. because they grew up with it. So... Yes, 13, 14, but is that enough time in your life to yeah. understand the true feeling of reward, the true reward mm -hmm. that you get from doing something well and knowing that you did it well? Or and, and dealing with bad comments and bad things and mentally being ready for that as well. Yeah. Mm. It's, and then yeah. the, there's the flip side of that is that I don't know what it's like for them because I didn't grow don't up. Know. Yeah. yeah, and exactly. so and and the mental well-being side of that would be really hard to contend with. So I would mm. never judge someone younger than me for yeah. not being able to separate sure. the social life for the real the social media life for the real life. But I, yeah, that was a big eye opener for me as a teacher that day because I thought you don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. So we have to again educate, educate you about. Them. The difference and educate them on the right amount of time they should be on there because that's my biggest fear with having two kids of my own um, is they're growing up in a world where it's becoming more common for you to be standing or sitting looking at a device which again we can't stop but I guess you've got to look at yourself as a young person now in this world and, and ask yourself how many minutes or hours a day am I just doing this and scrolling through feeds or, or, or different pages and is any of that, like how much of that is helpful to you? Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it's understanding that it's important and it is an educational tool, but if you're realizing you're on it too often, maybe just yeah. find something else to, to focus on that's going to distract you from feeling like you need to just you're do that at all the time. Else mm. is doing. You know, like growing up as a teenager, I, I would watch the dancers on telly, like on Hey Hey and the yeah, Logies. Young talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Young talent. Time. I was, I'm really showing my <laughs> age. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I watched that. Yeah, um, Star Search. Oh, New Star Search. They are the dancers that inspired me, and I just wanted to do gigs. Like, they didn't mm. rarely, so, oh, not rarely, but every so often you would see, like, that guy on 
or that girl on TV and then you'd go to a musical and I'd be watching this person going, oh, I think that was the one that I really loved on TV and now she's here and I, like, open the program at the end and I'd be like, yes, Leanne Cherney, she's my favourite dancer, yeah. you know, at the moment. Mm. Um, that happened, what, like three times a year <laughs> on television? Yeah. Um, so I had those little, like, kind of, I know, signposts to be inspired by and then... What filled in the blanks was just like me going to dancing and, and working, working really, it. really mm. hard yeah. to be like those dancers. Yeah. Uh, but, and it, it was nice to have that. Whereas yeah. now it's like you Every day. watch that, you see them post about it, you can find them in a second <laughs> via a Why hashtag don't you or have a, a post. Form, right, on your application form to come to a dance studio. Yeah. And the last question to come to this studio is why do you want to dance? <gasps> and it's fun, career, feeling and if it's a trick question circle and yes one of them. and you see which okay. one they circle so then you like go okay we're going to educate those people to calm the farm dance mum world right yeah. <laughs> then we got oh my goodness organic dancer yes <laughs> nurture that the one next <laughs> 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 you could totally categorise your dancers from the from the from the food chain when sure. they come in as their little what's the right answer know? I guess they're in no, circle all of them <laughs> No, there is. Answer four. I don't know what the answer is to my to my application form. I don't yeah, even yeah, know yeah. which one I'd circle. Yeah. Uh, there's like this. <laughs> we could just talk about all of these topics for an hour on there, yeah, couldn't exactly. we? But like, it's a very open. There's this other thing. It's like, yeah, you might be able to be. You, if you're Mackenzie Ziegler, like you might be able to hold a can of beans and <laughs> make that much make money. a lot of money, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. In, in our industry, um, even work, consistently working dancers often don't make that much money, I yeah. find. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I believe in it. <laughs> I do understand that. Uh, yes. Yeah, you, you might be able to do all this cool stuff. Is it going to make you a career like, and make you money? Like, yeah. Yes, it's an economy and a currency on its own, but... But like, how many people get to that point? We're in Australia, in Sydney, or wherever mm. you live. It's like you're probably not going to get paid to come to someone's class. Yes. We're not at that level. We're not LA right, yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, Which is probably, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that I'm too. I'm okay with yeah. <laughs> that, that being a thing here. But um, I'd pay 20 bucks to see me try and do a Grand Jedi these days. <laughs> <laughs> but I I'd ask you to pay $20 <laughs> yeah. for so me to do a... <laughs> Guys, should we pull our funds? Yes, and make it yes, today? yes. Um, <laughs> I've had conversations with kids that have literally told me that that's their career goal. Like they're like, oh to yeah, teach. no, to to um to make a living from social media, and and, and it does exist. Like you have yeah. to identify that people uh, do live in that did world. Justin yeah. Bieber get not found? Well, exactly. Yeah, that's it happens. True. But yeah. I guess if you're putting things that that mean something to you, that that um that represent you, and you're focusing on your actual um, talent and your actual growth, then it might happen. Great. If it doesn't, you haven't put all your eggs in becoming a social media star or yeah. becoming Justin Bieber. Because in reality, like, there's one Justin Bieber. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you know who's interesting who I thought? You know, Sophia Lucia? Yeah. Like, yes. You know, the girl that spun around and did the world record and stuff. And now she's like, just, isn't she? I was, she's in a ballet company. Like, went, went the whole ballet oh, route. Cool. just wanted yeah. to be. Last time I checked, she was in that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, it's interesting to watch case studies. Don't well, that's you think? it. And like yeah. a case study like Hayden Hopkins that I, you know, I met through Dance Upon a Dream. She won it and all that. And I've watched her and she's beautiful lyrical dancer and feet and all oh, juiciness, right? Mm -hmm. And now she's like in a mystere in Vegas. And all I see and I know that she gets paid – um, a cheaper rent. She gets cheaper rent if she posts by the pool in LA. Wow. Whoa. I mean, in Las Vegas, Las mm. Vegas, and all her shots are in a bikini and all like, mm -hmm. like that. And I'm like, oh, girl, I love you, but that's but not the girl yeah. I remember. Like, it's just this. But did the job like? Because I, I guess with people like that that have a huge social media following, and then they end up in say a ballet company or something like that, they probably got that. Can I talk about this <laughs> on their talent? More so than their following. What's very interesting, when I was in the Australian Ballet, sorry, just dropping my career, <laughs> I remember yeah. clearly David McAllister not wanting stars. 
Yes. And I was like, girl, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm a star and I want to be a star. I'm not going to be a quarter ballet dancer at the back, you know? Yeah. So now I've watched the Australian ballet social media totally flip around. They flipped as um, well. Some yeah. of the dancers have just released a Spartacus mm. video that's quite funny. Yeah, it's great. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> their social media and their way they interact with their audience is basically drawing more people. It's like Hungry Hungry Hippos. Remember mm. that game yeah. in the 80s? Yeah. It's how you can actually draw in your audience mm. and get more people to come to the live performance. Yeah. 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 I think there's just too and many dancers. Outside the box. Like, I think there's too many dancers. There's too many different styles of dancers mm. to try and cater a conversation around yeah, it true. to to give either one great advice. Yeah, there's so many different. Yeah, there's I too also, many. I think I see your point now of utilizing social media. I think the difference is when you speak of it, um, you put in the work, yes. and then you let. And then you utilize social media to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of people nowadays, like I was saying about rushing their training and things, they just want to get to fame straight away. And so they don't want to put in the work. They just want social media to do it for them. They want a Justin Bieber role. And I think you you need to 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 make both important if you're going to, if you're going to choose the route of utilizing social media, but you still need to make sure you're doing the work. That's right. It's like, it's like your current career in real estate. Um, you've built this whole thing that everyone in the area knows you for, and you've mm. got these amazing videos, you're thinking outside the box. Um, you know, you're also a great real estate agent. It's like, if someone was to go, oh, that's just the guy that does those really interesting videos, mm. you know, there's still, still talent from it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's still, <laughs> yeah, but you've built an extra following by thinking outside the box, posting some really interesting videos, getting them to dance with you. Mm. Really clever. Dan- dance ethics. It's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, <laughs> pull up, pull up, you know, try hard, lift your leg higher. But, but that none of that's going to matter if you couldn't actually sell the house. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's true. So I guess and that's... And there has been one or two that I haven't been able to sell because <laughs> the owners want too much money. I'm like, stop it. I get that much money. Um, yeah, it's it's well. I think what I with those videos that I do, I'm trying to do what you were talking about with live performances, making an audience feel, feel something. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to make the audience through the phone feel something. Mm. So then they have a imprint on their head when they hear the word Josh Horner they go oh nice guy guy, funny guy that makes happiness and has has success yes I don't post the video where I've got you know yelling conversations or bad days where I'm feeling like Mm. of course maybe we should all be trained to post the good day the bad day the good day the bad day Mm. so it becomes real but that'll never happen no, because we all want that. I but think that's yeah. that's the thing that of people creating a facade and showing people what they want or what they think needs to be put on social media to get a job, which is dangerous because there are a lot of like um, like Machiavellian characters and who are just devious and it's like will do word what for they a need. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! You said that word Furious. again, Machiavellian. Oh my wow! Mm. Um, just. Yeah, they, they do what they need to do on social media. But the thing that BJ bring up before, longevity, is that like you can do that, but essentially all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid yeah, on your real personality. Uh, mm. And so you might get that job, but once the, the people actually get to work with you and they see your true character... You're not going to get the second job. Yeah. Yep. Well, longevity is you need to be able to, It's yep. like you need to be able to work with those people and feel comfortable. And a lot of um, like what makes you hireable is your ability to create a safe workspace for everyone and um like people who hire or producers they have to do things like work work but occupational health and safety and they have procedures that make a workspace healthy and if you come in and you're someone that's going to bully people then that's a safety hazard because you're creating mental issues and things and creating an unsafe environment for people to work in and And, nice time yeah Yeah. and so you're not going to get hired (laughs) and so like you can utilize social media but there's a danger in the wrong people just knowing what to do on social media and they think i've got the job and that they're set Mm. but if you're not a great person offline 
Yeah, like that's last. your career's yeah. not gonna last. Well, like you said, well. Josh, it's like you're you're thinking about before you post that video. Is this gonna make people feel happy? Is mm. this gonna make them feel the right way mm-hmm. that I want them to think about when they think about my name? I think that's the same thing I would ask young people to ask themselves before they post. Mm. Are they asking, is this the right thing to get me a lot of followers or get me a lot of comments? Or is this the right thing for them to feel um, happy when they think about me or feel like, oh, that's a motivated performer or that's a nice that's person. A good reputation. A, exactly. Like you can create a reputation for yourself even if it isn't 100% exactly who you are. It's like Thinking those... about it carefully before you... No, I find it really hard to kind of... Uh, self, especially as a younger dancer mm. starting out, yeah. I find it really hard to know who I was and yeah, what I'm learning. presenting. Yeah. Mm. Like going into an audition, I, mm-hmm. I don't. I used to just find that really hard to know how I'm ca- even to. coming across. Like that yeah. self-analyzing thing was a got me a bit crazy, and I think probably a lot of like yeah. People would be the same, just and guessing. that's the same online. Yeah. So then it comes down to the teacher being able, <laughs> someone who can read the kid and extract the goodness out of them. Mm. I mean, my teacher, my first one, used to just scream, "Smile, stretch your feet, smile, mm. stretch." So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was just that ingrained in me. Yeah. yeah. Until you self, maybe there's no self assessment, and yeah, and then just the ingraining of performance. Um, and just the false sense of confidence because false sense of confidence um, like as as much as we're talking about posting I think people need to also realise that there is a responsibility in interacting online because like my real friends I remember doing dance class and my real friends in a like a nurturing way they would be like like man you did so good but like you could have pointed your foot on this pile. It was a bit mm. floppy or whatever. Where now in class you watch those videos and they'll like go, and you go, yes, yes, and, and they're like, praising you online, and you're like, and you like just they didn't forward do good. And touched a chest, yeah, like yeah. please, that's not a yes. Yeah, <laughs> I remember my teacher yelling, smile, and do all those things, and I would be doing it, or but she would just like absolutely like keep saying it, even if I was doing it. Do you know where I see this? To train, do you know when you get kids to do grandetes from the corner mm. and they film. They're like, yes, Bianca, yes, Angel, yes. And they're coming like dogs gone wrong down the thing. When we grew up, my teacher would be like, go back, do it it again again. until it's a full split and Mm. you got your feet pointed. Mm -hmm. Maybe like discipline and repetition, like why don't we rewind that social media video and like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you can but you I, can edit them now. But as soon as the so people perfect. commenting, yeah. like, <laughs> it was the other it right or speed it up yeah. so you look really cool and dynamic. You and know I think that's, going back to studio owners, and I think we do have a big responsibility. Um, it is a business, and we talk about that, and they do have to promote themselves, and they do have to have a social media presence, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. But yeah, you do have to ask yourself: Am I um, sacrificing some of the learning time? Am I? Um, focusing mainly on the results that I'm creating in class and at the same time finding a way to still have content to post. I think that's Mm. the question you've got to ask yourself. Am I literally just picking this person because they have a big social media presence or am I putting this up because, um, you know, as a byproduct of what I need to be focusing on in the Mm. class? We have a responsibility. It's Mm -hmm. important that we're not just, or as as an open class teacher, spending so much time um, there's people in that class that are coming to, to improve mm. and you have a responsibility. Yeah. I think, like I said before, I think a lot of this conversation comes down to your intent yeah. with what you're posting. Exactly. And like, are you doing it because you're proud of what you learnt or you're proud of what you're achieving or the progress you've made or proud of what you're putting out there as part of your reputation or is it just for the validation you get or from seeing hearts pop up. Just it's like those people who like, oh, Gotta ask that annoys that me when they go and they go on like these days and they're like, today I'm going to give pizza to homeless people, but I needed to film it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And if you wanted to do something good, like <laughs> go, go give them, help good. those people, <laughs> go to a shelter and, and help out with the, with, 
yeah. like feeding the homeless. Call paparazzi to accidentally <laughs> see yeah. Yeah. Or like, I'm going to give ten dollars <laughs> to homeless people, but this YouTube video is going to make me ten thousand. Does that mm. yeah. like uh, that's yeah. it does exist? Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that does exist. That like, happens. why are you doing it? Just so people can be like, you did a good deed, or yeah. are you actually doing it to doing help it. someone mm. that's having a hard time on that the street? Would be fun. Yeah. Also, I think we do. You, you're, we're all right. We all have great <laughs> we're points. Right. Otherwise, we wouldn't but be then, on a panel with like, people. <laughs> but then you're, you're content. You're always contending as teachers, mm. educators, open class kids, dance studio owners. You're always going to be contending with those, the people that are posting, but also following and liking and commenting, mm. just to be relevant and seen. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Bianca in the back going, yes. Mm. She just wants to be, she wants to be on the video. Heard. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Which is almost human nature Great. So in now a way, really. We all want to belong. a society that want to be heard. Just all we need. <laughs> yeah. But it, you know what? It, that's an <laughs> important point. I do point love the sound of my yeah, own voice. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, and I think a big thing I want our audience to understand is I'm getting people on with different perspectives to discuss these topics. It's not going... I'm never what's right saying, or what's wrong. exactly. Yeah, it's not about totally. going. We are the only people that know about this topic that we're talking about this week. Listen and learn from us. We're here to discuss it from mm. different backgrounds, different perspectives around the dance community. Um, but yeah, we've all had our own experiences online. We've all had different experience of watching other people make great moves and mistakes online mm. as well. Yeah, I think I'm guilty of kind of regulating my own personality just Online. I've just had an epiphany everyone <laughs> and that's this that's what it's for. <laughs> uh, like I, I'm happy to sit in a room and discuss these things and I say them when I teach and I say them in conversation with my peers and whoever will listen but I I would never say some of the things that we've even been talking about. I wouldn't get on Facebook and go, mm. this is how I truly feel. I feel, yeah. Mm. I would love to really... Well, I'll just pass it I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna do a post on that, that dance teacher's website. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Horner here. This is how I feel. For the next six months, I'm going to say it how it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I regulate that and about myself. get ready myself. for that one. <laughs> but maybe, but maybe if we didn't, then we're educating a bit better. Because, yeah. like, maybe I need to... As a teacher yeah. or as a dancer or whatever I am, take that a step foot further and like put my money where my mouth is. And well, I think we're scared to, and that's another reason why I wanted to put this out there is a lot of people will have amazing conversations in private that really matter, mm. but are scared. I'm having to them all the time. Will, yeah, yeah, right. But we're not writing but them on not our Facebook them, statuses. And that's what this is for. Yeah. Like that's that's what it is. Like I encourage other people to oh, well, one talk about likes it. To, you know, post about it and gets the big following. Yeah, or even like, <laughs> yeah. if, anyway. or even like people seem to try to think. I feel like these days they're trying to think of like what's everyone going to agree with me on. And I'll say that thing so mm -hmm. that also I get more comments of people going, yeah, that's so true. But it's like if you have something important that you want to say from your then experience. it's probably going to be the thing that not everyone agrees on. Maybe right? not everyone's going to agree on it. Like I'm sure we've all come from different things. There's going to be people that heard certain things in this episode that go, oh, no, I don't agree with that. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Mm. But we're allowed to also talk about it. We're allowed to voice our opinion and, and people should be able to kind of feel the same way and, and not feel like they have to. Um, be scared to, you know, if they have a right to that opinion, if they have experience in that area, mm. be scared to to say it. To, if it's if it's for the purpose of helping people grow and evolve. Yeah, if one person read it, yeah, and was educated by that yeah. in some way, that's a good thing, I guess. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, and not just having a rant. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Ooh, that was a nice pause. Maybe that's maybe that's our. Our, our time to say and another th no <laughs> yeah I think we could go on a day and there's a lot of different areas we, we could go on but I think it's it's nice to to hear um, that we all agree that there is a place for it and that it is important mm -hmm. there's a right way to use it and I think it is about intent um, and yeah and just a tool and a like, tool I think yeah, you said that tool. in the first five minutes of this chat it's like it's a tool hmm. in a kit with lots of other tools. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And knowing yeah. your audience. Just perform to the audience. Like, mm -hmm. you know. 
exactly. And everyone's watching on social media. So. Well, that's it. That's the other thing <laughs> we kind of didn't mention is we always have to remember that it's there forever. <laughs> Whatever we put out there is online yeah. and it's, it's there forever. It's never going to go away. I but actually do have another point, though. Go on. <laughs> oh, it's Before open. We go, Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Last I have, I have um, this, this feeling that a lot of social media, not social media alone, but just the importance of getting people's open class quarry or say like full-time teachers, um, getting their quarry out instead of educating. I think social media has made that more important than it should be in the sense that every class is becoming a combo class. Mm. Yeah. And right now there's not enough foundation training. or technical training <laughs> and conditioning to actually teach us how to, how to be able to do those combos mm. to, up to the Definitely. best of our abilities. And at the same time, is kind of killing the culture of dance. Yes, and the evolution. Which is like another thing, like people don't actually realize where did dance come from or yeah. who are the Pioneers. curators of dance yeah. the pioneers yeah and, and why we're and, doing or like where did dance come from like yep. the oppression of all the things that people felt and that came through expression and things like this and people are just like this person who's teaching me right now made up these dance steps yep. and they just like copycat cookie cutter yeah yes versions of that cory so and true. i think that it seems uh, as much as like combos uh, important like, yes because obviously we learn to dance so that we can do choreography but I think also we should be putting a bit of importance in the education of where did dance come from yeah and like everything the effect that social media has in deleting or cancelling that kind of culture and part of dance mm. yeah it's the intention it's just being aware of and it the more balance than right like yeah. that's yeah. that's kind of the common thing what's your intention are you using it as a tool and are you balancing it with all the other important parts about your mm. life and your career, right? Mm. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Thank bro. you guys so Wait, much. Wait, can everyone follow us on Instagram? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of our Thanks, pages bro. are at the bottom. <laughs> Just follow these. Yeah. We can't have a social media app without yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. following because I need some new followers. It's been so great chatting to you guys, honestly, and uh, it's been um, – I've learned a lot from hearing all of your thoughts on it. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, now, like we've been talking about in the episode, it is really important to us to keep getting these messages out. Um, if you can, share our videos, subscribe to the page, um, write some ideas in the comments. Um, I would really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we can hopefully keep growing this dance community together. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Dance Talk.